Lesson 5.5a, Applying Operations with Rational Numbers, Interpreting a Word Problem. When solving a word problem, we need to pay attention to clue words. Clue words tell us whether we need to add, subtract, multiply, divide, or to use a combination of these operations. And clue words help us interpret the problem. Interpret means find the meaning of. What are we looking for? There's going to be a link to a very short, short clue word video in this video's description if you'd like more help with that. The steps to solving word problems are, one, we analyze the given information. What data is important? What are we asked to find? Two, we formulate a plan. We determine which operation is needed. We write an expression that makes sense. Three, we solve that expression. We follow PEMDAS, the order of operations. And last, number four, we justify and evaluate. We check for correctness and reasonability. So remember, expressions don't have an equal sign. They can have numbers and variables and operation signs, but there's no equal sign. And equations have equal signs. So, to quickly cover some of the clue words, for addition, you might see the words sum, total, in all, greater, or more. For subtraction, you might see difference, how many more, fewer, less. To multiply, you might see product, per, of, by, each. And to divide, you might see quotient, per, and each. And notice that for multiplication and division, you might see per, for either one or each for either one. It depends on the context of the word problem. It depends on how the words are put together in the word problem to decide whether you need to multiply or divide. And again, these are just some of the possible clue words. So to review PEMDAS, we do inside parentheses first, that's the P, then we evaluate exponents, that's the E, we multiply or divide from left to right, whichever comes first. That's the MD. And then the A and the S are add or subtract from left to right, whichever comes first. So it's not that this is the exact order. It's that we multiply or divide whichever comes first from left to right. Then we add or subtract whichever comes first from left to right. And we skip any steps that aren't included in the expression. So here we have an expression. We have 5 and 4 tenths plus 3 and 2 tenths. We would do inside the parentheses first. We would add them and get 8 and 6 tenths. Now, there's no exponents, so we don't do any. We skip it. There's no multiplication, so we don't do any. We skip it. We see there's division. So now we have 8 and 6 tenths divided by 2. It's equal to 4 and 3 tenths. We're splitting 8 and 6 tenths into two equal groups of 4 and 3 tenths each. So here we have a word problem. We can read it, figure out what information is important. We can write an expression, and then we can solve it. Bob bought two and 25 hundredths pound of green grapes and three and 75 hundredths pound of red grapes, where both types of grapes are $2.19 per pound. How much did Bob spend on grapes? So we think, both types of grapes are the same price per pound. They're both $2.19. So we can add the pounds he bought, then multiply by the price per pound for total spent. The per pound tells us we need to multiply to apply that $2.19 to each of the six pounds when we add the 2.25 plus the 3.75, we get six even. We're going to multiply $2.19 by 6. It's the price per pound for 6 pounds in all. We do our regular algorithm. That means the regular way to multiply. We remember the dollar sign. And we have one, two jumps in the equation for the decimal point. So there's going to be one, two jumps in the product. We have $13.14 that he spent. We wrote it to do addition within the parentheses first. Then, when we had that total, we multiplied it by the price per pound. Here we have another word problem. You notice we have a table on the side. 
Let's look at this table. It says lawns mowed. Now we have June and July, and it's got Bob mowing 12 in June and 15 in July, and Dave mowing 10 in June and 11 in July. Now let's read the problem. Bob and Dave mow lawns during the summer. In June and July, Bob earned $283.50, and Dave earned $257.25. Who charges more per lawn? So you might look at this and think, well, Bob earned more, he probably charges more, right? But to find their price per lawn, we need to divide the amount they each made by the number of lawns they each mowed. So for Bob, we have $283.50 divided by the 12 plus 15, which is 27. And we're going to do within the parentheses first. That means we have a long division problem of $283.50 divided by 27, the lawns. And for Dave, we're going to divide his total amount by the number of lawns he did. And 10 and 11, that's 21. So we're going to divide his amount by 21. So I already started them a little bit. We ask ourselves if 27 can fit into 2. No, it can't. So we're not going to write an answer up here, part of the quotient up here. But 27 can fit into 28 one time. And 27 times 1 is 27. We subtract that from the 28. We get a 1. And it's this 3's turn to come down. How many times can 27 fit into 13? Well, it can't. It fits in zero times. So we're actually going to write a zero up here. And now it's this five's turn to come down. Now we could say 27 times zero is zero and then do subtraction and get 13 again and then bring this five down. We could do it that way. Or we can just say, well, that was zero. So we're just going to bring the five down. Either way, it's the same thing. How many times can 27 fit into 135? Well, we can guess and say four times. Well, that's 108 when we do multiplication on the side. When I try five times, it is 135. So now we know it's five. And 27 times five is 135. We subtract, we get a zero. How many times can 27, because this zero is going to come down, how many times can 27 fit into 0? Zero? 0. So now we have another 0 that we can technically subtract to get a 0 remainder. Our decimal point, because that's a whole number, is going to go straight up into the quotient. We know Bob charged $10.50 for each lawn. We could have estimated 283 is close to 300 and 27 is close to 30. And 300 divided by 30 is 10, so we would know that Bob charged about $10. That's our estimate. Now for Dave, we can estimate this as 260, and the 21 is a 20, and 260 divided by 20 is 13. So just from estimating, we can tell who charged more. It was Dave, but let's find out exactly how much Dave charged. I began the long division already. 21 can't fit into 2, so I didn't write anything there. 21 fits into 25 one time, and 21 times 1 is 21. I subtracted it, got a 4, and then it was the 7's turn to come down. How many times can 21 fit into 47? Well, if we do it 2 times, that's 42, isn't it? So we know it's going to be 2 times, which is 42. We're going to subtract that. 7 minus 2 is 5. It's this 2's turn to come down. Now, how many 21's can fit into 52? Still 2. So we're going to write a 2 here. That's 42. We subtract. We get a 10. 21. It's this 5's turn to come down. How many 21's are in 105? Well, 21 times 5 is 105. So we can put a 5 here. It is 105. We subtract it a zero remainder. Our decimal point goes straight up into the quotient because that's a whole number. We know Dave charged $12.25 per lawn. So who charges more? Dave does. We found our answer. 
So be careful because in this problem, Perlon tells us we need to divide to find the price for each lawn. Per means each. It means for each one. So if you see you need to add two amounts together or you need to subtract, you can write that in parentheses and then figure out if you need to multiply that amount or divide that amount. So we finish this lesson. We're going to move on to the second part of 5.5. We're going to talk about converting fractions and decimals to solve problems. When a word problem contains both fractions and decimals, we need to change them to either all fractions or to all decimals. And we'll talk about that in the next lesson. Have a great day. Keep doing your best. I'm proud of you for watching math videos, and I'll see you next time. Bye.